Hello, everybody. Thanks for being with us today. We would like to share with you our ideas in how games-based learning can be a teaching skill that will transform the way we learn. I'm Alejandro Suarez, founder and creative of Creativa Kids, and with me is our Director of Education and Learning Experiences, Sara Cuevas. And we will do our best to leave you some content that can be useful for you to teach in a new and different way. Nowadays, learning is being transformed with all the elements that surround us. Children are asked to develop hard and soft skills to be able to solve real life problems and be prepared to enter into the labor force. Also known as the four C's, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication are the skills that are being asked for the kids of the 21st century and are expected for teachers to include the Haydn curriculum. We should remember that the principal aim of the, of the curriculum should be answered to the students' necessities, generating meaningful learnings, which will prepare them for the future. Constantly innovating the learning process makes it possible to teach the children of different generations without staying obsolete. One of the educational trends that are currently permitting the teaching methodologies is introducing games and video games as didactic resources. This seems as an extremely innovative idea, but three centuries ago, the German pedagogist Frederick Frevel was already speaking about games as the highest expression of human development. That is because Frevel recognized that gaming allows a person to learn from all the elements that surrounds them and to practice with their knowledge in controlled spaces. It is easy to agree with this idea, but taking it to practice is not a piece of cake. Today, we will mention two ways to incorporate games to the learning process. Each of them could be used in different contexts depending on the objectives of the object that we are aiming to teach. The first one is gamification, which is the strategy that incorporates game elements to a training process. It helps to recognize achievements by rewarding the student when he presents a desired behavior or reach a learning outcome. It could be defined as an educational path enriched by fund resources. The second one is game-based learning, which consists on merging the core content and objectives from a training and a game. This permits to make the whole learning process fun. During the game, Children will develop specific skills, use and consolidate their knowledge in a cheap learning outcomes without feeling part of a traditional learning process. But again, both are great resources to incorporate fun and creativity to educational activities. But because of how it works, game-based learning helps to engage children on their learning and create an environment that boosts imagination and the desire to be part of the process. This itself is one of the things that we as teachers are most looking forward to, producing the kids the licking of an earring. We are sure it is not a surprise for you to hear that video games are the most played game in the present. On a typical Thursday, Steam video game platform registers up to 20 million users playing per hour. The industry is growing so fast that on 2021, the quantity of gamers is expected to be close to 2.8 billion people. This is around the 36% of the population of the world. And it is, why, it is why teaching by using this resource is a right guess by approaching the students with something they already like. Now, here is a fact that might not surprise you either, but that will help us to identify our opportunity area. It goes as follows. In 2016, 27.5% of all the games sold in the USA were shooter games. What do we expect society to learn if what is being offered on these daily teaching resources are killing skills? And of course, it is not our aim to eliminate these games, but to take advantage of a great resource to enlarge the opportunities that students have to learn. Even though these popular games can develop 
some skills for young generations, like strategy, teamwork, and resilience, among others, giving kids the opportunity and knowledge to create their own games will develop new skills like creativity, problem solving, technology literacy, and several others that will become a competitive advantage for them to be successful in many fields for the future of work and at the same time will project the educational platform which we count with. What a huge responsibility trying to create educative games that will apply to all our students. What if, but what if we incorporate developing video games in the curriculum? How can we do it? Let's talk about coding. Coding is the process of creating instructions for computers using programming languages. It is used to program websites, apps, and other technologies. The digital tile industry is growing at the fastest pace in history, provoking the creation of millions of jobs related with coding. Industries and jobs from several areas like design, marketing, finance, medicine, and many others will consider the ability to code as a must or a competitive advantage on their workforce. Coding develops a variety of skills as logical and critical thinking, vision and problem solving. Also teaching these concepts in early stage will create more profound learning experiences that will stay for life and establish a structural mindset that will become a competitive advantage. Being able to communicate with computers is as hard as communicating in any other language, just adding the complexity of making the instruction perfectly clear for them to reproduce the information. The earlier children are introduced to coding, the easier and more natural it will be for them to apply the knowledge in their daily activities. If we choose the correct activities, it will also be fun for them to learn. It is easy to create video games if you know what tools to use. It is possible to create your first video game by using basic concepts of coding and either using them as a didactic resource or as a strategies for the children to learn. As a didactic resource, we can create video games which can incorporate the lesson subjects. For example, this is an easy game for health education. To put the organs on the right place is an easy way for children to memorize the distribution of the body parts. It can help them to create an alternative reality in which they can interact with the concepts on paper to see exactly where they are. On the other hand, we can ask them to create their own games using knowledge that they previously got and take advantage of their interests to impulse significant le learnings while have, having fun. How can we create these easy games and introduce children to coding world? We can start with graphic programming, which will allow us to teach the coding basics and logical thinking since an early age. Mblock 5 is an open source and free to use block based build programming software. Based on Scratch 3.0, it uses colors and shapes to make it clear how to connect the blocks to create a whole instruction or algorithm for the program and the robots. It has a stage in which we can create animations that will work as a foundation of the video game, making it either consolidate a learning by providing a virtual space to interact with or the key to allow them to imagine how something can be represented and provide them the resources to create an imaginary space to make it real. We can make it react with the keyboard or with a simple additional Arduino-based component or robot, which will help us to increase the fun and the opportunity to interact with it. So how can we do it? We would like to share with you five very steps to create your first video game in mblock 5. With this, you will see how easy it can be when we are creative enough to think in how we can make our classes fun. Now, Sarah will show you how to apply these five steps so we can create a video game right now and right after you finish this presentation. Perfect. Perfect. So, so let's, let's get, get started. started.
Today, Today we're, we're going to use this simple example, example of, a of a video game that we, we want, want to create right, right here, right now, with really. you. We're going to be using MBlock 5, which is MakeBlock's graphic programming software, and it's one of the most complete resources that we can use to create this type of video games. Um, right now, we're going to start name, labeling our program. This is going to be related with add, uh, additions and subtractions, so we're going to just name it like this, and it's going to be related to a monkey, so we will put it here. We're not using devices today, so we're heading directly to the sprites. In these sprites, we can find a panda, which we're not using today, so I'm going to delete it. And now we're going to add some other elements. In the first place, our main character is going to be a monkey. So here we're just going to type monkey. And now we can choose any of the ones we can find here. We're going to select this one because it has different animations and we like it. Then we're setting this monkey over here and we will start working out with some fruits. Uh, since we're going to talk about ads and subtract, we're choosing fruits which represent the numbers that we want to add. For one, we're going to have one apple. And for two, for example, we're going to use bananas. We have two right here. And for three, we will use some beans. Uh, yeah, we're just going to type it. Perfect. So, yes, uh, we have three beans and we put them right here. Now, for fourth and fifth, we couldn't find any fruits that actually had this number. So, we're going to use cakes, which actually have the number. So, here we're going to choose this cake that has four raspberries. And finally, we're going to add another cake. Yeah, we're going to write cake right here, and we're going to choose this one, which has five cherries on top. So it's really easy to see the number that each of them has, and we're going to work with this for addition. And now for subtractions, we're going to work with a bomb. This bomb is going to help us to subtract one point each time. Yeah. So we're going just to put it here. And yeah. Now for complementing this game, we will be using some backgrounds. And for the backgrounds, we just have to move on to this other part in which it says backgrounds. And we will start to select some options. First, we will like the monkey to be on an open place to be able to play. So we're going to work with this forest. It says forest, but it's like a jungle to me. And now we can add some other random place. I think we're going to select today and a specific place on space. So it's going to be fun to send him there if he loses. Um, perfect. Once we have this information here, we're going to keep it aside until later. So right now we're going to try to start working with the sprites and begin with all the programming. So let's get started. Yeah, we are selecting each sprite. Perfect. We're going to start today with the monkey because it is going to be the first one that we're going to use and it's going to be our principal character so it's going to have the lead of all the programming that we're doing today we are creating the biggest part of the code on it also joining all the information from the other stuff the fruits will be using this to work so right now we're going to start by using this event block when the flag is clicked. And yeah, with this, we're going to start right now. We're making an easy program. So we hope you can follow it and enjoy it for all long. Let's start with this monkey. And this program will have several elements to complement to create a full working video game. Now, 
we're going to hide all the other objects to make it easier to work with each of them. So we're going to start hiding all of them one by one. It is really easy because here on the bottom of the page, you can see like in an eye. So with this eye, we will be able to select each fruit. And when selecting each fruit, we're just going to ask it to not been shown and that way we're just going to work one by one it's going to be really easy okay so heading to directly to the the program we're going to start by creating some movement for the monkey we want him to be able to move side by side and have all other stuff to can move on this so for this we're going to head to the blocks of control and on them we're going to choose this if then block to start working and we're going to use this other block which is used to control with our keyboard and we're going to choose two different options the arrows so we're going to use the right arrow and the left arrow to move the monkey on the stage and we like you know that we have two axes so we have x and j to work with which permits us to move the character in the whole stage. What happens if we choose the axis Y? Okay, let's look for it. Perfect. So, yeah, here we can see the one that controls the X and the one that controls the Y axis. So, yeah, right now we're going to use the one with the Y. So, we can see how how it works and understand why we're choosing each of them. So we can do this with kids so they can see what is the difference between the axis of Y and the one on the X. Yes, so right now we're going to start trying out what we're doing. And for this, we're going to make a little test. First, we're going to add this forever block, which will help us to keep making this happen. And when we press the arrow, it moves to the top because the Y axis is the one that moves like this, upside down. And if we change it for the one in the X axis, we're going to be able to see that now the motion goes side by side. That's the way that we want to work today. So we're going to start with this one, with the X axis working. And now we're going to try to duplicate this information in order for us to have it to go into the left and to the right. So right now we can see that even though we have selected arrows right and left, they keep going to the same place because the number is the same. So we have to add a minus 10 in order for it to move to the other side. Perfect. Now, once here we will recognize that the monkey actually seemed very big to this stage. So we recommended to change the way it looks. So we go to looks and here we can select the block for change the size. We are planning on changing it to around an 80% of the actual size of the monkey. And now it seems pretty okay with all the, um, information of the game it seems pretty accurate the size right okay so from here 
we are going to start working with the other sprites. So we are going to add them to the information that we have right here. We're going to start with this apple. We're going to make it sim. And right now we're going to start with this one. And then we will use the same information to work with the other sprites. So we should remember that the apple value is one because it's just one apple. And now we have to add again this block, the if then block. This will allow us to ask about what is happening on the screen. In this case, we're not going to ask about the side or if we are touching some key, but what does the monkey is actually touching? So yeah, we're going to select this one first and we're going to change the idea of the mouse pointer instead of it, we're going to select this sprite, the Apple one, which is the one that we're working with right now. And now, if you remember, we said before that this monkey could have some different animations. So we're going to start using this to see how it changed. We're going to collect um, we're going to see yeah, the different options of how the face of the monkey can be and now we're going to put this same block in two different places so we're going to keep it with the face to A that it's kind of happy when it's normal and we're going to keep it with the face to B that it's kind of excited when it goes to the apple. Right now, the apple is not moving or doing anything actually, but each time we put the monkey over it, it makes him happy or excited. So now we're going to ask him to wait until he stops touching the apple. Right now it's not so clear why we're going to do this, but in a few seconds, I'm going to tell you exactly how it works. So here we can see that we have two moments. One, when the monkey start touching it, and then when he ends up touching it. So yeah. Right here, we're going to start doing some other elements and see that we can find out how to to work with this. Now, this is really easy and we're going to start working with some variables. A variable is actually a data which will be changing while the program is running. So we are just going to head over here where it says variable and we're going to create one. We are going to use more than one today, but right now we're going to start creating this one. We're going to name the score and we will give it the information from different points that the monkey can have. And every time it the monkey touches a fruit, it's going to change the score. So first we're going to set the score for zero because we want to, it to start like zero. And then we're going to ask it to change it by one each time it touches the apple. Here on the screen, we can see the actual score. And then each time we put the monkey over the apple, it's going to add one point. Now, what is important about this is what happens if we take off this lock that we were saying a few seconds before that we don't know how or why. So here you see that the score is going to change rapidly because it doesn't have any reason to stop. So the information that we are asking it for here is that it doesn't count again the apple until it stops touching the monkey. So that way we just count it one time each time they touch. Okay. 
Perfect. So right now we're going to start with the actual programming of the Apple. When we touch the Apple and go to this screen, we can see that the code is completely clean, even though the monkey's code is a stator. So the Apple is completely a new spot to work with. And we're starting at the same, the same way with this block with the flag, the green flag. And now please watch the size of this monstrosity. We have to fix it. If this apple ever touches the monkey's head, he is going to get knocked out. So let's change the size. By adding this block, let's set it to, I don't know, maybe around 50%. Let's see how it looks. Okay, touch. Okay, it, it still seems a pr like pretty big, right? So um, I think that we could change it to 45, perfect. And now, yeah. Yeah, I think that size is a little bit better. Even if you see it big, you can keep changing it. So right now, what we want this to do is to keep um, like it start moving, but we always want it to fall down. So we are going to point it in 90 degrees. So yeah, we can see that it is right now in this position and so the apple is not going to be turning around. Now we're going to see where we want it to be. Um, first, we're going to try to move it to the top. And here we're going to see where in the axis X and Y we can find them. So the first thing that we want to do is to set this in the top, like the, the most top part of this screen. We're going to try to make it to 20, 250, but it actually doesn't even move. So we know that the 190 is like the limit of the screen in the top. So yeah, we're going to leave it like in 190. And that way we're going to know that it is on the toppest part of this the screen. And then we're going to choose the place where we want it to appear. So we're going to like we could choose just one spot for it to appear but we don't want that we want it to appear randomly in different spots on the x axis so the the monkey doesn't always know where the apple is going to be so right now we're going to see yeah on the x we're going to set also the x but we are going to add something that makes it differently, that makes it appear in different places. For this, we're going to head to the operators, perfect, and we're going to add this block that says pick random. So it's going to choose random numbers between two different positions. So for this, we're going to see how long our screen is. And we know right now that the number is around 236 minus, perfect. And then uh, obviously on the other side should be something similar. Um, perfect, okay. Yeah, around, yeah, the same, the same long length for the other side. So now we have it and it can choose randomly any place. So each time that we press this, code, it moves to different places. That is something that we want it does to do. Uh, perfect. So right now, what we want this to do is start moving upside down. And we're going to ask it to move like around minus 10 or minus 5 I don't know I think that we want to try minus 5 on the y axis it actually just modifies the velocity in which this apple in this case is going to be falling down that way we will have this opportunity or it's going to be easier for us to catch it and to have the numbers that we need so yeah I think that we're going to use this minus 5 option and now, we want it to keep going down until 
it reaches certain level on the down part of the screen. So we can choose different things for this to happen. It one can be the limit to the down part of the screen, but the other is actually the last part in which the monkey can touch it. So yeah, that's I think that we're going, what we're going to decide today. So we're going to repeat it until the apple is on the place in which the screen ends for the monkey. So if we can see here, we're going to compare the information and this way it's going to be easier for the program to understand when. So we're going to compare the Y position, the, the position of the apple in the Y axis to a number. And this number is the one that we're going to obtain from this information. So it's going to be minus 100 and it's going to be changing by minus five until it happens. So yeah, right now we can see that that's what happens. And now the apple is closest to the monkey. Now, once we are here, we will like it not to stay on the monkey's hand, but to return to a place above his head. So we're going to set again this spot, the y, in, like the 190 on the y-axis, and this way we're going to be able to have all the information correctly. So each time it touches the bottom of the page, it is going to be up again. And now here we're going to try to repeat it. So each time it repeats, we are going to be able to see that it changes the place in which it is. So right now we're supposed to catch as many apples as we can. And each time that you catch one, you can see that the score changes. So this is why we're going to have this whole information. So right here, we only catch nine up to the 10 apples that we were able to catch because we had 10 repetitions of this activity. So yes, perfect. So in this case, we have this, but we can change it in different ways. So it can be one option is this one, repeat during certain amount of moments, but we can also use the repeat until. And for this one, we will be able to add some other characteristics that we can depend on. So in this case, we can see that it's a comparison between the timer. So it will take some time as any other game and we will compare it and it has to be bigger than. And we're going to use 40 today because it's easier for us to start working with this, but later on we could change it to whatever we, we feel like having. So yes, right now we're going to make a small tryout and we're going to give 10 seconds to the monkey to try to catch everything. And he starts running. And as you can see, even though he catched almost everything, I think it's only six points because in 10 seconds, it only took like the possibility to catch this. So yes, now we have a whole thing that's working with time like any other game. And oh, we could say that this is going to change because 10 seconds, it's really a small amount of time. And we would like to add here that it has to wait. Why waiting? Because it will help us to control when the game starts. So the apple is not going to begin to fall until we press the space bar. In this way, we're going to be able to control the whole game. As you can see now, we have all other elements that we have to work with. Finally, we have this other element that it's going to be waiting. If we don't wait, like we saw before, uh, 
the apple is going to be falling and falling and falling again a lot of times. But something that is going to make a little bit more interesting our game is to be able to wait different amounts of times easier. So here we're going to put that we are going to wait to fall again a random number between 1 to 10. And then the apple is going to fall. Let's try this one again. So it is waiting for us to press the space bar. And now once we press it, it's our running and yeah. It waits different amounts of times. It depends on the random number that it obtains and we only have 40 seconds to catch them all. So it is a combination of luck and actual good work with this. So yeah, now it, I think it had finished the time. Perfect, we're going to stop this. And now let's see. So we, as you can see, have a lot of more objects or sprites to work with. But it could be a really hard work for us to make all the programs. But if we select this one and then take it to each of the elements that we're working with, you can see, like right now we're going to see it, but we are copying our program on each of these different sprites. So we don't have to make all this programming a lot of times, but on each of them, we have the program and they are going to be doing the same thing that the Apple. So we know that all of them are going to be working. Yeah, so let's see, they are all in the top and now we can go to the monkey. And on the monkey, we have something that it's missing. Right now, we only have this first one that contemplates the apple. And among the apple, we have a lot of more things that we're going to be using. So let's duplicate this element in order for us to have all the different options. Mm, yeah, we're going to put them all inside of the same cycle so that it is easier and okay i think this one is the last one perfect and let's go to the top so first we have this comparison of the apples but then we will start working with bananas so it is if bananas then it keeps like this we have to change it by two and again we eat bananas until they stop touching the same thing with beans we have to set the number of three and beans again, perfect. Then for four, we're going to choose, cho choose sorry, the first cake and we have to, yeah, perfect. And we're changing it for four, perfect. The last one of the cakes is going to be the number five and cake again. So I know we're still missing one of these project but it's a little bit different so first we choose bomb the same way that we have been working with all the others but we here we have to change the phase that they do because with the bomb the idea is that he feels a little bit sad perfect and now there's this last one that we also have to add one but we said that we wanted to decrease it so we're going to set a minus one and now the program is ready. So, yeah, let's see. So each time we catch any fruit, the fruits are going to give us a number. It's going to be adding. Perfect. So, yeah, we can see that it happens. And in the case of the bomb, it will decrease our number. Perfect. Yeah, it is working exactly how we want it to. Excellent. Now here, we have to work with 
two more things. One is related with the background, which will make us feel more like in a game. And the other one will help us to compare the actual information that we have. So yeah, let's get started with the backgrounds. We're going to go to the option look, and then we're going to select this one that it's going to help us see these differences in the back part of the image. And we're going to set the forest five. That's the one that we ch choose before. And Yeah, this way we're going to actually be on the place that we want to be. And now we said that we wanted to work with some other variables. So right now we have one score that it's the one with we have been working with until now. But we would like to start working with some other variables that will allow us to create some more information. So let's see. Um, we uh, enter again on this variable and we make a new one. Here, the first one, we are going to create uh, something named sum. Perfect. And we are going to work with this later. And we are going to create one more, that wh which name is going to be time. So now we have two different new variables and we're going to set them all together at the beginning of our program. This will help us to understand what we are doing and to see that our program is working correctly. So score we want it on zero uh, time. We also want it from to value zero when it, the program starts, but we have some. So yeah, we're going to set some here and we're going to give it some values. This value is going to be a pick a random number. We can change the numbers depending on what we are seeing with our children. So in this case, we're going to choose to be picking random from 10 to 30. And this way we're going to have this first information. Now in the stage, we can see the status from the three of them and we can move them however we like to make it easier for us to understand or to learn what is being said here. So right now we have this information and we are waiting for this and you can see that the score and time starts in zero, but some will change each time that we start again our program. Perfect, so right here down, we have this option of a forever, but we actually don't want it to work forever. We just want to work it for a little while. So we're going to repeat it until. We're going to repeat it until the time is over. So it depends on how many time we want to give our children to work with, but we're going to make again a comparison between the time and a number so it is going to be clearer and in this case we're going to respect the 40 that we had put before on the other sprites perfect okay so now um, here the time has given us some information and now we're going to compare the time with a timer. But we have other option that says round. So I would like to use round, but let's see why. If we set just timer and we start the time or start the program, you can see that the timer is moving really, really fast. But what happens when we use round? Then the timer is just counting one by one. That makes it easier to read. So yeah. I think it's, it's better for a game to have this option than the other one. And like all the other activities, we will wait until uh, the space bar is pressed. 
This is going to help us to give us a clue the, of when all the program is going to start and how to control it. So perfect. Um, if we want to know like the final scores and all this, we will have to make some more questions. So specifically, we would like to know if the number, the sum that we had before and the score are the same at the end of the game. This is going to tell us if we are winning or losing. So we're going to compare it. It has to be exactly the same and we're going to set score and sum. If score and sum are the same, then, and we have this option of else in this doc that we are using right now. So we're going to do, or the monkey is going to do something. It has, is, it, he will say, you win if the sum and the score are the same. And we'll say, try again if the sum and the score are different. So yeah, we're going to use some other, other element to get a little bit funnier. And we're going to try to make the monkey travel if he wins or lose. So in the case of the monkey winning, we're going to add this backdrop. In this backdrop, we are going to duplicate it and put it on the other one too. If it wins, we are going to send him to the beach. And if he doesn't, we're going to send it to another planet. So yeah, right now our program is pretty much complete and we can make some tries. So right now it is waiting for perfect. And now we start trying to catch the different objects. We have a 23. So we're supposed to start looking to get there. We had 24 and we so <clears throat> we're supposed to avoid all the fruits and try to catch just one. Yeah, now we need a lot more of our bombs to be able to win. And the time is almost okay. Yeah, so right now we lost. <laughs> so yeah, I think everything is working perfectly up to here. Perfect. Uh, now, we would like to give some instructions at the beginning. The rules are really important. And if the kid is trying to work this out by himself, it's not going to be clear. So let's set this option. It says, hello. And it says, it's going to say, hello, my name is Changuito. Changuito is little monkey in Spanish. So it's going to be funny for those who are learning and now that we have it up to here, we're going to put it to wait for three seconds, the information. And now we're going to start changing a little bit more these options to see more things. So then we will use this, um, use the fruits to reach the sum number. Uh, sum perfect number okay so now it's going to stay for three seconds also let's see if that's enough mm, then yeah uh, we're going to make another one it's going to say well we can duplicate them as many times as we need and here we're going to ask the program to tell us what is the sum probably we won't need three seconds we may lose like use less sorry so yeah we can put it there and then duplicate again the the block perfect and now we're going to try to write something else here um maybe we can put something like each fruit values as the number of fruits it has perfect and now Let's do one more. Excellent. So yeah, now the bomb will decrease your addition maybe by one. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. I think these two last options should be a little bit longer because I think the the sentences are yeah bigger. Perfect. And I think that it's important for the kids to know what to do next. So let's ask them to press the space bar if they want to start. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, super. Now, we have this other option that it's going to put the monkey in just in the middle of this. So, yeah, we're going to put it there and then add this element that compares. Perfect. Now, if you want to see how it fully works, let's get started. Excellent. So this is the full game that we have been creating. Now we can see how it fully works. When we start it, then it starts telling us this information about what we are supposed to see. The number right now is 12. So each fruit is going to help us to add the different numbers. And each time we are past this number, we can so track them using this information. So once it starts, we try to keep getting this. Right now we're just missing a two. So, okay, perfect. We took it and let's see if we can keep like this for a few more seconds. Okay. Uh, just 10 more seconds and then we will win perfect so yeah um okay if we want to make it a little bit more difficult we can make the limits of the wall less flexible and we can also add some sounds to make this activity more interesting so yeah as you can see we can make a video game pretty quickly i hope you enjoy this so what do you think? Sometimes the first time you do it, it can look a little bit more complex, but it will be very easy uh, with a little bit of practice. We believe it's all creativity. In developing countries like the one where Sarah and I live, we have to be creative and we need to do big things with very little resources. However, today, more than ever, knowledge and tools are more close to us if we know how to use them and also if we have the willingness to change the way we are used to. Finally, let me give you our best advice we can. We believe that for kids to get engaged in anything, we have to provide them activities with these five key elements. Number one, it needs to be fun. Nobody likes to learn boring things. Number two, it needs to be easy. Kids need to feel, depending on their level, that they are able to achieve things in order to engage. Number three, it needs to be meaningful for them. It's different to learn while playing with video games, drones, robots, electronics, than any traditional method we can think of. Number four, it needs to be in team. No, not everybody likes everything, and we, and we need to learn to work with others to achieve bigger outcomes. And number fifth, it needs to be with a purpose. It is different when you understand why or how this can change your life instead of because it is required. So we hope this presentation can be helpful for you and uh, Sarah and myself are really thankful for you for, for the opportunity to be in here. Uh, and all of our teams in Creativa Kids will be happy to teach you more about this or help in any way we can. Thank you very much.